cover several different types of oxygen masks. The most common ones Batars use are nasal cannulas, non-rebreathers, and bag valve masks. They're also known as APU and BVMs. If a patient only needs supplementary oxygen, we often use a nasal cannula of 2-4 to four liters of oxygen. Usually these patients need it for medical conditions such as COPD, mild shock, or if their oxygen saturation is below 94%. Again, this is for supplemental oxygen. For non-rebreather masks are used for more serious patients who need oxygen right away. While different states have different protocols, generally a patient will set the regular to 15 to 20 liters of oxygen. Patients with altered mental status, stroke, or are unconscious typically need oxygen right away. Lastly, the BVM is used for unresponsive patients who cannot breathe on their own or are in cardiac arrest. When using the BVM, Vitoras adjust the flow to the highest setting and are forcing the oxygen into the patient's lungs. In this video, the instructor will explain the three different types of oxygen masks and demonstrate how to use them properly. Make sure to follow your mountain and state protocols too, for each state may have slightly different rules when to use and apply oxygen to their patients. First, I'll demonstrate using a nasal cannula. A nasal cannula has two prongs that goes up inside of the, the nostrils, the nares of the patient's head. With this, the, the delivery is, we have your oxygen turned on, and you want to turn the um, regulator on between two and six. Most of the time, four is a good number, okay? Basically what this is for is to, uh, to so the patient doesn't have anxieties that you're doing something for them and it just takes the edge off. So you turn your, you take your, the end and it gets placed on the, the barb right here. You're going to turn it on the four. How you place this in is you take the hooks, the, 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 the uh, prongs are sh shaped like a, um, a uh, rattlesnake's teeth. They come down. So you want to put this underneath of their nose like that, rest it on their, on their upper lip, over the ears. A little tough with Fred to head because his ears don't stick out. But we're going to put it on like that and then you're going to cinch this up. And make sure that the patient is comfortable. If in fact for some reason the patient needs a little bit more oxygen, you want to remove this, turn your oxygen regulator off, and now you're going to use what is known as a non-rebreather. This has a bag and you're gonna you we're gonna hook this the same way up to your regular to your regulator. You're gonna turn it on, and this is anywhere from 10 to 15. The thing that's very important with this is you need to put your fingers over this to blow up the bag to be at least two thirds full. Once you've done that. You're going to place this over the patient's nose and their mouth and this over their head, such as that. One thing you want to be aware of is some people can be claustrophobic and this might really freak them out. So what you need to do is monitor your patient, but if they can tolerate this, this is okay. But the other thing is you want to make sure that they're not in any kind of respiratory distress, that you're giving them some supplemental oxygen, but every time they take a breath, they collapse the bag. Like that. That means that they're, they're breathing more than what they, they need to be. So that way, what you need to do then is remove this. 
and then you need to get this out and you need to breathe for them. The BVM, same thing. You're going to put it, hook it on. You're going to, now this time you're going to go from anywhere from 15 to 25. Now you're going to be breathing for them. Make sure that you cover their nose over their mouth and you're going to breathe. My rule of thumb is when I take a breath, I give them a breath. I take a breath, I give them a breath. It's supposed to be anywhere from um, 12 to 18, mostly 12, you know, one every five seconds. But my, like I said, my rule of thumb is if you take a breath, you give them a breath. Okay, so next we're going to demonstrate the use of a, uh, an adjunct, which is known as the nasal pharyngeal airway. So you need to measure, and how you do that, you go from the corner of the nose down to the tip of the ear. It fits. Okay, you want to take and you want to lube it up. Make sure you put some lubrication on it. Now, it has a, a bevel on it, and you want to go against the septum. Usually, the, uh, um, the uh, right nostril is bigger than the left, but you're going to have to be able to take a look. Make sure. The other thing is, a contraindication of using one of these is if, you, if the patient has a brain injury and you're not sure if, in fact, they have a, uh, a basal fracture. So, once, once you have it lubed up, you have the nair, you're going to put it in this way and you're going to feed it down into the patient's airway just like that. Well next I'd like to demonstrate the oral pharyngeal airway. So this adjunct gets inserted into the mouth and we have different sizes. First what you need to do is you need to measure it up to make sure what size you're going to have. I like to teach that this, these things have a hook on them. So if you hook it to the side of the mouth and you reach down like that, you can see that that's too long because it's supposed to go to the tip of the ear. So let's try this yellow one and that looks like it fits pretty good. One of the things you got to remember is um, if the patient has a gag reflex, then you can't use this. You have to go back to using the nasal pharyngeal airway or also known somebody will t call it a nose trumpet. So how you insert this, you're going to take this and scrape the roof of the mouth and as you're, as you're inserting it, you're going to twist it 180 degrees and, and what you're doing is you're lifting the tongue off the back of the throat.